we all know that misconfigurations and expired DNS records can lead to serious threats like spoofing or even downtime. What exactly is DNS posture management and how does it help teams? If we think about DNS posture management, it, it's really around helping enterprises understand risk that could emerge primarily based around DNS misconfiguration before an adversary does, right? And, and the way uh, I learned sort of, you know, pen testing coming up is is step one in, in red teaming or pen testing is recon. Step 1A is, is DNS recon, right? That's typically where you start to, to fingerprint an organization, understand, uh, you know, various domains and, and uh, sort of what you're dealing with uh, from the outside in. Uh, it, so it's fundamental from, from that perspective that, that DNS is configured appropriately so that you're not uh, equipping an adversary. You're not leaking information, right? You're not uh, uh, helping somebody understand the inner workings of an internal network that should be kept, kept private. But the real issues that, that we see are things where, where DNS configuration is not up to best practices. So a couple of things that could take place. One could be something like a, a DNS registry lock uh, is not put in place, right? And, and I think we'll talk over our conversation about some really, uh, really kind of impactful attacks that we're seeing, you know, over the last quarter where that's the vector, right? Where somebody... Uh, commandeer sort of DNS at the registrar level, and then they're at a very fundamental level of control over the, over the org, uh, able to manipulate mail and SAS and many other things. Um, other risks that we see uh, are around sort of uh, as we move to a more distributed architecture where you've got cloud, you've got SAS, you have third parties, DNS is often the the, the invocation of, of third-party services. So if we look at Akamai, uh, the vast majority of our customers are are integrating with us via DNS, via uh, uh, a redirect, a CNAME, something along those lines. And the classic problem that you run into with uh, any of these delegations is sort of the full life cycle of an application. As app dev teams work with infrastructure at the beginning of, of the life cycle of an app, you know, the, the DNS records are, are put in place, they're configured appropriately. But then sometimes at the end of that life cycle, the app dev team would bring an application down, but there are pointers still in place. You know, we call those dangling C names or there's lame delegation. There's a variety of nomenclature there, but it's risk, right? Because the, the residual there is, is that the organization has a pointer, a valid pointer out there, uh, you know, that somebody could then go register, right? And, and now an adversary is on the receiving end of of potentially uh, a domain that's valid, uh, assert that's valid for your organization, right? So we see those uh, bug bounty uh, teams love those. They go looking for these dangling C names uh, and, and try to make a claim there. Uh, it, so that's one, right? In, in other cases, it's just uh, human misconfiguration. So there was a very high profile uh, misconfiguration of DNS uh, earlier this year with a world-class uh, security organization at a big financial services company, and they uh, had a DNS uh, entry where they had one letter off, uh, but now they're pointing their DNS to a, a domain that was not a well-known uh, domain because of the misspelling, uh, and then a, a researcher registered that, and now they're on the receiving end of of really, really important DNS inquiries for financial transactions on the web, for email, uh, for the enterprise that they could intercept, so many things that could go wrong there. So uh, I would say at a high level, the those are the problems that we try to solve with DNS posture management. Uh, the way that we solve those problems is with a, uh, a vendor uh, provider agnostic service that looks at DNS across all of your various, uh, you know, authorita authoritative DNS providers, your uh, cloud service providers. Some people have DNS uh, with their registrar. Uh, and, and review those configurations uh, on a regular cadence to look for risk emerging uh, and find those things before somebody else would. Sort of analogous to the way people look at the configuration hygiene of their cloud configs with cloud security posture management. Same thing, uh, just looking at DNS. Fixing something which you know is broken is fair, but how does a combined DNS posture management help teams catch and fix those issues proactively. This was Akamai, for example. It doesn't have to be. It could be any other, but we provide a lot of DNS. There will be regular scans against your DNS to look for uh, 
misconfiguration. Uh, and then that would be uh, reported along with very simple instructions for how to go remediate that. Uh, you would also get sort of a compliance checklist of, you know, looking at CIS sort of best practices for the configuration of DNS. How does, uh, how does our current configuration stack up against those benchmarks overlaid against a PCI framework, a HIPAA framework, a, um, you know, you name it, uh, NIST, any of the, the, the supported frameworks uh, to give you that confidence from a, a GRC perspective that, that you have best practice uh, configurations in place.